Brought to you by Propaganda Premium E Liquids. And my name is Mella One, and I got a West Coast legend in the building. My man King T, what up, fam? What's up, man? Yo, thank you for finally coming through. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're finna clown me. Nah, I ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't gonna do, I ain't gonna do you too bad, man. All right. You know, but we had we had a little mishap, but you know, he came through. Yeah, yeah, I apologize, man. You know, I'm way out, you know, so. I'm here now, though. The liquid is in the house. That's all that matters, man. So let's take it back. Your first album came out in 1988. Yes, you got that right. Long time ago, right? Yeah. Wow. What was the What was the climate like in 1988 for hip hop uh, on the West Coast? It was. It was none. It wasn't that. <laughs> it was not. Well, you know, it wasn't really established yet. You know, we had Ice T. Yeah. That's pretty much, you know, helped me get in the door. Uh huh. But we were coming from like uh, an independent label called Techno Hop. Okay. And I did a song. Well, after I did the things with Techno Hop, I did a song called Bass. Yes. With Greg Mac. Yeah. And Mac Daddy Records. And um, original uh, K Day. Uh, yeah. Jock. <laughs> nice. That's how I got my deal with with Capitol Records. With okay. Bass. Yep. Okay. Okay. So during that time, because you, you was in Compton, so during that time you had Toddy T, Mixmaster Spade. Yes. Rest in peace, my man, Mixmaster Spade. Yes. What was the scene? So you said it wasn't really no scene, but it was a big, it was a music scene in Compton, right? Cause well, well, yeah, it was just getting started, you know. Um, Mixmaster Spade was like one of the kings of Compton that did like mixtapes, real mixtapes. Yeah. Mixing and scratching and uh, singing, rapping, you know, all that. But... You know, we had Too Short, we listened to Too Short, like I said, Ice T. The West Coast, like really back then when I put up, before I put out Act of Fool was more like, we were listening to a lot of East Coast hip hop. Who was your favorite at that time? Oh, I listened to a lot of people, like people wouldn't know, uh, like T La Rock. Okay, uh, it's yours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Crash Crew and uh, okay. Cold Crush Brothers. How did you hear about it? Because radio wasn't playing it and it wasn't no internet at the time. How did you get a hold of like T. Rock and all the old school stuff back then? Uh, just friends from the East Coast. Okay. Uh, uh, and I loved hip. I, you know, when I first heard like Rappers Delight and things like that, that's when I started really putting in research on the East Coast trying to get the make, you know, the, their tapes and things like that. Yeah. You know, cause that's where it really originated at. Okay. You know, so, and I started hearing, uh, you know, Love Bug, Starsky and yeah. all, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I got into it. Uh, but my favorite was more like LL Cool J, especially Big Daddy Kane, uh, T La Rock. Is it true that Mixed Master Spade would bring LL Cool J through Compton? Uh, I think he did it once. Okay, okay, did it once. Cause I know second yeah. of us said they, they they was in junior high school and they yeah. seen cause yeah. Spade rolling through Compton with LL Cool J. That'd be crazy. Yeah, cause uh, Spade was down with um, Roger Clayton. Okay, the Prince, rest in peace. Yes, he was like the, the Uncle Jam's army. Yeah, yes. and that's who bought first bought LL Cool J, Run DMC, Houdini, and all that to to the West Coast was Uncle Jam's army. Oh, nice. Yeah, so nice, nice. So. Your first album comes out in 1988, mm -hmm. and it's 30 years later. <laughs> How does it feel to still be doing music? Well, I'm more into more like production now. Um, I can't really be rapping a lot. Anymore. You don't rap no more? Yeah, I do. Okay, I know you still got bars, so. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a little bit, a little bit, but it's, it's a younger generation now, and you know, um, but, I don't know. It's, it, it, I'm just happy to be here. I'm, I, I'm blessed, and I've, I've, I've been down with a crew, the Liquid Crew, that that's done their thing, the Alcoholics Exhibit, um, and we, you know, we're still here. That's dope. That's dope. So when you was doing your first album, and uh, one thing that I noticed about you, because I'm a West Coast dude, born and raised, I'm a hip hop connoisseur, okay. and your album covers mm. was always legendary. You had the low riders on there. You had the very first one. You had the Cadillac on D's with the with the with the khaki suit on. With the strap. With this with with the with the shoddy. Yeah. And then after that, every album cover had a car, a low yeah. rider on the thing. Was that something that at the beginning you said I'm gonna have this, or did it kind of evolve from there? 
it just can't it's just kind of evolved and, uh it was kind of like glenn freeman's idea too like okay to keep that uh going on he so, shot all your covers yeah okay him and uh there was another dude too that shot my uh lap the last one i can't remember his name i can't remember his name he's gonna fucking kill me <laughs> <laughs> what uh were those cars yours on, on the cover two of them were okay which ones were yours uh the cadillac on act of fool the first one the the, the silver one yeah oh, no, no the white one okay white it was cadillac. white okay yeah it was okay. just it just it was just a regular cadillac with with gold datings on it okay um and the the last out the the king t for life album that i did with universal had a cadillac on it okay mm. okay and your first major hit was that the song that got you got you signed right bass, bass right uh yeah bass and how did bass come about uh <laughs> just uh trying to do a deal with greg mack and he was trying to start a label and things like that me pool and uh, dj bobcat just went to the studio and we had that sample from brass construction i always wanted to rap to okay uh and we just did it and it got play you know greg blew it up i and know he did it, yeah, it's yeah. legendary now so let's so we talking about bass let's get into it right now let's this is it. king t this is bass right here on white label radio let's get it label radio brought to you by hanging with the homies they got the dope air fresheners out and about so make sure you go to hang with the homies dot com and we still here with the legend the west uh -huh. coast legend my man king t tila yes and tila is the architect behind the alcoholics where you are you the godfather of alcoholics when, uh yeah, I mean, you could say that, the, the alcoholic Don or something like that. How did that come about? Because they, they, they got their debut on your album, which was, was yeah. your second album, right? Was it your second album? My third. Third the album. Trifling album. Trifling album. Got yeah. it bad, y'all, right? Yes. The video was dope because they was at the, at the car wash. Yeah. I loved it. I yeah. loved it. How did that come about? How'd you... How'd They're you just about? old friends. We, you know, uh, j Ro. He was like kind of my hype man in the beginning of my career on stage and we'd go on tour and things like that. And he he introduced me to E Swift, who became my DJ on tour, and they brought out uh Taz from Ohio. Okay. So they were trying to put something together. I think they had a little demo deal with A and M. They were called ESP, Everyday Street Force or something like that. And, you know, at that time, everybody was like create, you know, they were crewing up, like clicking up, like Ice Cube had, um, what was that, Lynch Mob? Yes. Uh, it was a couple of, you know, uh, um, Fat Joe had the Terror Squad, things like that. So we wanted to form something because we, I was kind of trying to get out of the gangster element. And we really didn't want to go down that road because it was already NWA and Easy -E and things yeah. like that. So we wanted to we and plus when we rock, we were more on some party shit and, and yeah. drinking and getting messed up and things like that. So we just cre it was me and Pooh came up with these ideas like we either create a, a group called the Daily Chronics. <laughs> or the alcoholics and I, I i chose the alcoholics and i just bought in j-ro and so you came up with the name alcoholics yes yeah. okay yeah and they already ha they was already working on demos so we just had a meeting at, at my apartment in hollywood and i said we should just do the alcoholics you know fuck all that oh i'm sorry could i curse no you can't oh, sorry. <laughs> it's all good we'll, said, we'll, we'll edit it out <laughs> you know let's just create the group uh, I'll pay for it. Let's just go in the studio and start doing crazy songs. And we just went to the studio and just started creating songs. And they got to deal with um, loud, loud records, mm -hmm. loud records. I remember going to alcoholic show, and I was I, I tell the story at the time. Like you go to hip hop shows, and there's a bunch of dudes just there, me mugging in the front row, bouncing. Yeah. Every time I went to alcoholic show, party, it was always girls there. Yeah, and I was like, it's. But then I would hate it because I'd be in the front row and I <laughs> get sprayed get with beer and yeah. I, I didn't drink. So I would go home. I'm like, why do you feel like beer? I'm like, because they sprayed everybody with beer. Yeah, I used to love it. <laughs> Funnest time. And that, that, that brought out the, the liquid crew we, and we, you know, we meet up. We get a chance to meet this, this kid that's tearing everybody down by the name of Exhibit. He's 
tearing up the wake up shows and he just want to be down with the liquid yeah you know? so it just blew up from there and you know we've been rocking ever since y'all had it y'all had an epic crew one thing about it that like, we talk about posse cuts and crews about it. nobody would give the liquid crew credit like they mm-hmm. should on the west coast they talk about hieroglyphs they talk about other yeah. crews yeah but you think about it you had yourself you had the alcoholic you had the far eye the far eye. you had Phil, exhibit Phil Phil agony. agony you know yeah, I, 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 can even, I can even take a loop pack and with mad live which is a legendary yeah. producer now yeah. you got the barbershop mcs you yeah. had a lot of a lot yeah. of a lot of dope mcs out there Just partying yeah that's dope that's yeah. dope so there's been now, like people's been talking about this, and I want to get your perspective on it. Notorious B.I.G. Mm. Now, rumor has it that he kind of, you know, got your style a little bit. They say that <laughs> you was one of his favorite MCs, and you can find some of his your cadence on some of his records. Have you ever heard that? And what do you think? I've heard rumors. I don't. I don't particularly uh, ride with it. I I knew Big. We were cool. I kind of I know I doted on him. I, I love this style. Yeah, and, and you know I was a big I'm a big fan. You know, um, you know that people say Puff said you know said things like that. I don't know. I think we just got off of each other. You know, I didn't really. It's funny. My cousin would always say that he was like, "Yo, like he got," and that's why listening to it. Well, and, I know they got like. You, like the baby and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that came from us and, and things like that, but it was all cool. I mean, you know, I was more on him than he was on me, trust me. It's dope because, like, the song Kick in the Door, like, he has a part in there mm-hmm. that I swear it's you. Uh-huh. It's like the, the cadence or whatever. How does that feel to have, like, we're talking about B.I.G. And, and, and this is the anniversary of his passing or yeah, whatever, L.A. Sure. What is it, how does it feel to have, like, one of the greatest of all times Say, even if he's not copying your style, but say you're one of his favorite MCs. How does that feel? Oh, man, it's, it's, I don't know what to think, you know, because like I said, he was one of my favorites, you know. But yeah, that, that's, that's live. You know? So since we talk about Notorious B.I.G. and, mm-hmm. it's, and it's, it's anniversary, let's get into a Biggie joint. What's your favorite Biggie joint? Mm, you couldn't play it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into one of my favorites then. Let's get into the one he did with Bone Thugs and Harmony. Okay. Notorious Thug. He actually dope. flipped his style yeah. like theirs or whatever, which was it dope. Was dope. Yeah. It was dope. So let's get into it. My man King T, Mellow One, White Label Radio, Notorious B.I.G. Let's get it. <laughs> 